Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. Hope this video finds you well. Got a lot to get to, so gonna try to talk a little faster, not ramble so much, and not try to keep you here for half an hour because, as you know, I like to talk. So as things have changed in the hobby, um, you know, a lot of us are, you know, burnout or just not thrilled with the way things are going. Um, count me in that group. Um, if you watch Mike Baseball Collector, uh, you know, the things he's saying, I feel those things too. I say I'm on Twitter and I get called, you know, negative. I get called a gatekeeper. Well, if that makes me a gatekeeper, then I'm a damn gatekeeper because just not thrilled about where it's going. So I am fortunate in that, again, you know, kind of referencing Mike, Mike talks about how he's got a lot of different collections that he does. So do I. And because of that, a lot of things get ignored a lot of the time. Uh, so I am trying to get back to something that maybe I just find a little more fun, interesting. Um, and that is working with or collecting Indianapolis 500 related stuff. You've seen a little bit lately. I picked up a matchbook recently and I talked about how I have to think outside the box because there aren't a lot of actual IndyCar, Indy 500 trading card sets produced. Uh, right in front of you is an example right there and we'll talk about that later on. But I'm going to start doing, <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this open wheel Wednesday is what I'm going to call it, I guess. And <clears throat> I will try to not put my Mail days for this kind of stuff in with my Monday mail days. I'll kind of keep them separate. Maybe I won't, you know, there could be weeks where I don't have anything. Um, I just kind of got back into this a few weeks ago, so that's why I have a decent amount of stuff. But it's going to get, it's going to slow up. It's already slowing up. Pretty much everything that I had purchased is already here, and there's just not a whole lot more out there. I kind of grabbed what I grabbed and went for it. So... Let's get going. So these you have seen before. If you've been watching my channel, these are the T36. These are 1911 American Tobacco Company auto drivers. Uh, again, if you've been watching my channel for all, hey, look, there's my reflection. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I have the 25 card set already. You probably know that. Now I'm working on the master set. Each card has four backs. On this one, you can see Mecca. And then there is a factory number. So there is a Mecca Factory 30, a Mecca Factory 649. Is this a Hassan by chance? Hassan back. And then there's a Hassan 30 and a Hassan 649. And I am working on that master set. So a uh, seller that I have bought bought a few of these off of. And his, he's, he's charged some ridiculous prices, but people have been paying for him. So what are you going to do? He actually put an eight-cart lot on. And I think it was because these are lower grade. Um, I won the lot, eight cards. I need two of them for my master set. So this is one of the ones I need. This is Harry Grant. This is the Mecca 649 back. Mecca, boom, 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 649. Uh, Grant drove four times in the Indianapolis 500 and finished as high as seventh. He won the 1909 and 1910 Vanderbilt Cup races on Long Island. Those were the most popular races in the United States or it was the most popular race in the United States prior to the Indy 500 and probably even for the first few years of the Indianapolis 500. He was killed in October 1915 during a practice run for the Astor Cup. So that is one that I needed. The second one I needed here is the Victor Hemery Hassan 649. Focus, focus. Oh, well, you're not that worried about that anyway. So this completes the four-card back run for me. This was the last back I needed for him. Uh, he never ran Indianapolis, and he actually lived until 1950, which is... Uh, there are a few guys in this lot that actually lived later, but a lot of the guys in the set were killed early because the early it was just the early days of auto racing. Uh, Ralph Mulford, uh, he raced 10 times in the Indianapolis 500. He finished second in the inaugural race in 1911. Uh, he had a five additional top 10 results, so... Six out of ten times he was in the top ten. He's also in the T227 Champions set. So if you uh, feel like you've heard his name before elsewhere, that could be why. That set has Home Run Baker, Ty Cobb, 
There's a pitcher, I can't remember, maybe an A's pitcher. Can't recall exactly who, but nonetheless, so you may have heard his name before. So that's a multiple for me. Felice Nazaro, he never ran Indianapolis, but he lived until 1940. And it's kind of a, it's an interesting trend. Well, let's just keep going. Burt Dingley, he ran uh, the 1912 race, finished 13th. That was the only time he raced in Indianapolis, or in the 500, and he lived until 1966. Victor Demogay, he never ran Indianapolis. He was uh, a European driver. He lived until 1970. We got Louis Wagner, never ran Indianapolis. He lived until 1960. And Joseph Tracy never ran Indianapolis, and he lived until 1959. Definitely one interesting recurring theme in the of the guys in that set is the ones that died young typically were the ones that ran Indianapolis, though none of them were actually killed at Indianapolis. Um, but it seems like the guys that did not race there actually lived longer for some reason. Uh, I could not tell you why. Happenstance. So the two cards needed puts me at 66% complete on the 100 card master set. And I have a buddy, uh, Anson, if you know pre-war cards on Twitter or prewarcards.com. He has decided to put this set together. Now, he's only going to put the 25-card set together. He know, he uh, bought a lot that ended after this from the same seller. Uh, he told me he was going after He told me he was going to go after this lot, and he lost track of it and forgot. So, you know, I got this for a gr this lot for a great price. These cards were like five apiece uh, is what that came to, and that's really super cheap compared to where they've been the last few years. Um, he's got another. He's got one that I need, so I he's going to send that to me, and I'm going to send him some of the ones he needs to get him going on his set. So I should have another one of those coming sometime in the next couple weeks. Uh, the next cards I have, interesting. They're, it's called the 19. It's a 1970 Fleer set. It's called the Drag Strips, even though none of these are drag racing cards. So the first card here is the Andy Granatelli portrait. If you've watched my channel and these seem familiar, there's a card in here that I do have already um, because it's one of my favorite Indy 500 drivers. But this is Andy, the Andy Granatelli portrait card. Uh, he was the CEO of STP, and he, he was a longtime USAC car owner. Uh, he owned the car, the Mario Andretti car that won the Indianapolis 500 in 1969. This is Joe Leonard's car, the car number 60. Leonard was actually a three-time national motorcycle racing champion before he got into four-wheel cars. Uh, he ran Indianapolis nine times, and he finished third a couple of times. As you see, it's kind of a recurring theme on these. Um, you'll see a lot of the STP stuff. The It's a 10-card set, and they were produced by Fleer. They were backers for their drag strip stickers that they did. You would get multiple stickers in a pack and then you would get one of these. Again, these are a little these are thicker than stickers. Thicker than stickers. So they were used as backers, but there's only nine of these different ones. This is uh Joe Leonard and Andy Granatelli, the car owner, the two guys I just talked about on the last two cards. This is Granatelli with Parnelli Jones. If you don't know who Parnelli Jones is, he is one of the most versatile drivers just in the history of motorsport, period. Uh, he ran Indianapolis seven times. He won once and had three additional top ten finishes. He also ran 34 NASCAR races and won four of those. He's in at least seven different motorsports halls of fame. Uh, he may be in more, but those were the ones that I found on my deep, deep research or as you might call it, Wikipedia. This one, if you've uh, watched most of my videos, you may have seen this one before. This is the Ken Miles Lloyd Ruby car. Um, it was a sports car, but Lloyd Ruby is from Wichita Falls, Texas, about two hours from here. Uh, before Michael Andretti, he was considered the greatest driver in Indianapolis that never won the race. Um, but he's just apparently the nicest, most down-to-earth guy, and... I've shown it before, so I'm not going to talk a lot more about them, but that's why you've seen that one before. This is Graham Hill. So these cards were produced in 67, but he actually drove this car in 68. Uh, he drove in 69 and 70, but drove different cars, not the number 70. Uh, Hill, you may have heard of. He's the He was a two-time Formula One world champion, and three times he finished second. 
And he ran at Indianapolis th those three years. He won in 1966. I'm sorry, he ran 66 to 68. This was the one he ran in 68, though, I believe. Um, yeah, he ran three times, and he won in 1966 in his first uh, start. And these are the same. These last ones are the, the same one. This is Daryl Daringer. Um, unlike all of these other guys, uh, he never drove or he never had any real association with the Indianapolis 500. He was born in Indianapolis, but he chose stock cars in set instead, uh, in the top NASCAR series, you know, whatever you want to call it, Sprint Cup, Winston Cup. I don't know. I don't even know what the hell it's called now. Monster Energy, I think. He ran 181 races and he won seven times but definitely interesting that he grew up in indianapolis had offers to drive usac indy cars and just elected that for whatever reason uh, i didn't do any deep research he elected to drive uh nascar so looking in front of you you see this indianapolis indy 575th running race game so i was looking for another game that has cards in it, and came across this one. This one was super cheap. It was open. It's been used. It was funny. The user's name was like, I'm cleaning out my closet or something on eBay. I got this thing for less than 10 bucks. But I have to look outside. You know, there aren't a lot of, like, mainstream, you know, pack-issued um, IndyCar-related cards. So I picked this up. I had seen these on ComC, I believe, before. But it's a 75th anniversary game, and it works off of these cards. But they have a year, a name, and a car. So for me, they're as good as trading cards, honestly. So I'm not going to go through all those, but I was going to show some of the highlights of some of the top three guys that I like historically that at least won a race. So this was 1969. I mentioned earlier uh, this was Andy Granatelli's car. He owned it, the STP oil treatment special, but it was driven by Mario Andretti, the only Andretti win in the Indianapolis 500. We got the three here of Lone Star JR, Johnny Rutherford, who just lives over in Fort Worth. He won the 74, 76, and 80 races. Like I said, and you can see the different, like I said, it's got him, it's got the car, it's got the date. I mean, it doesn't have statistics. I mean, it's, I guess technically it does have some statistics. So for the purpose of what I'm doing, the way that I just want to collect stuff, that cards, because I'm a card guy, I'm not a, not a memorabilia guy, these kind of have to do. And then A.J. Foyt, he's got four. He won the race four times. Um, the 77, 61, 67, 64. Interesting to see, you know, from the earliest, which is 61, kind of what the car looked like. You know, it was kind of a it was the roadster, and then here, seventy seven, the last time, obviously he went through the a major evolution in cars. Uh, cars didn't really change at Indianapolis for damn near forty years, uh, but then the roadsters kind of went away and gave uh, and along came slowly. But then they all came across, and they were the rear engine cars that are much more like the cars you would see today if you watched the Indianapolis five hundred. But yeah, there's a lot of other ones in here. I don't know necessarily that every card is here because this set was opened. I will, there are some sealed sealed games that are a little more expensive, and I will definitely be picking up some of those in the future. But, you know, a nice little stack of cards. I'm guessing it's about 80 cards because it was the 75th and of running, so there was would have been 74 winners, and then there's like some kind of wild cards in here, you know, for the aspect of the game. So probably about 80 cards here. Continuing on our outside the box theme, you know, and outside of what I would normally collect, I picked these up from for three dollars a piece plus free shipping from a seller. So these are five by seven postcards, um, and this is going to be from the '60s and '70s. This is probably going to be a lot of what I'm going to have to acquire just to add things um, because there just there aren't trading cards. So we got an AJ Foyt here, and these all have like. I don't know if Deckle Edge is actually what it's called, but they definitely, you know, they're not smooth, and they look like those uh, Topps Deckle Edge game cards. So they got an A.J. Foyt. There you go. This Mario Andretti, 1969 winner. 
Mark Donahue, uh, who was, I believe he was Roger Penske's first driver. If not first, he was his second driver. Um, he won his first Indianapolis with Mark Donahue, um, who uh, passed away just a few years after that. Bobby Unser. Joe Leonard, who we talked about earlier when you saw the drag strips cards. Peter Revson, who is pro him and Leonard are probably the least well known of the drivers in this little group. Uh, Revson was actually like a nephew of the founder of Revlon and was like an heir to that or was able to work, but he did not want to do that. He wanted to drive race cars. And then uh, Bobby Unser, 1968 winning car. So these all seem to be very similar. They seem to be from the same year set or something. Because of this one, it makes me think that the distribution on these, well, and it does have the Indianapolis Motor Speedways, these were probably distributed at the Speedway and or the Speedway Museum. I don't know. There are, you know, a decent amount of these out there. I don't know if that's the distribution on all of them or what, but that's something I'm looking to learn and my friend Mike on Twitter, who has, I've mentioned him before, he has probably the greatest Indy 500 driver collection. He has so many of the drivers' autographs, probably more, like I said, probably more than anybody else. I think he's missing less than 100, which is impressive when there's been 800 drivers. And a lot of those guys in the teens and 20s and 30s only raced a time or two. Uh, many of them killed young, so they did not have a long signing life. Um, but anyway, he's got some contacts he's going to put me in with, but I think one of them is a tax guy, so he's a little busy right now, but hoping to find out a little bit more about those in the future. Um, so, boom. There's not a lot of indie specific trading cards out there. This one, I'm not obviously, it's not technically sealed, um, but I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to show it because it's got the old... Uh, Price tag on it, I did not pay that. I may actually try to peel that off and see uh, what it says underneath it. Oh, it was $69. Dropped all the way down to 63 uh, I paid less than 63 for both of these. This one's got a good seal on it. Um, this set, it's a 108-card set, 36 packs, 8 a pack, so I should be able to complete a set with one box, fingers crossed, so I'll open this one for a set. This one's got a nice tight seal on it, so... This will uh, this will just be kept for a while, um, but for now they're both they're both going to go on my uh, unopened wax shelf that I've shown off in the past um, and saved for a rainy day. Um, those were 1995 Skybox Indy 500. These I went a three box lot, made an offer, and got accepted. Uh, these are the 1993 high tech Indy boxes, and like I said, I got three of those. So there's no list of how many packs or how many cards per pack, so I have no idea how many, how many cards there are in there. Um, but it's an 81-card set, and then there's an additional 12-card insert set. There's a couple promos that I'll probably have to go pick up so that I can add them. Um, but again, three boxes of these, and these are going to go up on the shelf. And then the last thing... Interestingly enough, it's a 21 pack lot. I paid like two dollars for the packs. The shipping was like nine, so I think I paid eleven. I paid uh, basically fifty cents a pack for these. It was just some loose packs, 21 loose packs. But this, uh, as far as I know, is the same set because I can only find one Indianapolis 500 high tech set. Um, interesting, which is interesting because it says series one right there, if we can focus series one, but there were never more that I know of. Um, they did release sets the next two years that were associated with Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but they were Brickyard called Brickyard, which means they're NASCAR. So I don't know. But anyway, let's just go ahead and do a quick, uh, that's it. But let's do a quick, let's just open a couple of packs of these, check them out. Let's see what people for that. See what you think. John Paul Jr. He just uh, passed away recently. He might have. Bettenhausen. I think that's Tony. Bettenhausen does not say on the back. The Bettenhausen family had, I think, three guys drive there. Unser. Andretti. That's Michael. That's for sure Michael. 
Bonner. I actually do not know who that is. And then these are the ones I really like. Well, Brian Bonner. There you go. Scott Brayton, who tragically, who won back-to-back -back polls and was on the pole for his third one, decided to pull his time, go back out, and unfortunately lost control of his car and was killed. And the thing that I really admire about Scott Brayton is listening to Donald Davidson, the now former Indianapolis Motor Speedway historian. This guy loved Indy, and he knew the history of it, and he could talk it, and he knew that what he was going for. And that was one of the reasons he went out again, because he thought the speeds were picking up and he was not going to be able to maintain and unfortunately lost his life. John Andretti, who passed away last year um, from cancer. Scott Pruitt, who later ran in NASCAR. And Scott Goodyear, who you may know if you have watched the Indianapolis 500 in the last few years, is an announcer now. has called the 500 and some other races. Yeah, when ABC had the... Uh, the contract because he worked with them. Guessing that's the pace car from that year. Got a close finish there. Is that the Unser Goodyear finish? Closest finish? To... Yep, at the time, and I think still 0.43 seconds, the closest finish in Indianapolis 500 history. It's a Marlboro. That's a Penske car of some sort. Doesn't really say anything there sure exactly what that is. They're not lined up by three, so it's not the race start, I wouldn't think. Oh, I guess it was. They just weren't lined up in threes anymore. Gordon Johncock, who I got uh, uh, TTM autographs from last year. I may have to try that again. I think that's Scott Prappas. I keep forgetting they don't have the last names on there. That is Mario Andretti, Scott Pruitt, Scott Goodyear, and that would have been Michael and no, that's John Andretti. John Andretti was driving that Pins oil car. Over one more, we'll be done. If you hung in here, I appreciate it. Um, if you like this, like I said, I'm going to try to keep the IndyCar stuff to itself because I know it's going to be a very limited uh, interest. But I do appreciate anyone watching that does. Just another one of these randoms race accidents. One and two, is that Michael and Mario? Yep. And that's a Penske car, not really sure what the point of it is. Pit crew practice. Menards, rookie test. Nelson, that was Nelson Piquet. We go with the, uh, I'm guessing that pace car again. Closest finish again. Tarp, or whatever it called it. Protective coverings again, race start again, Gordon John Cox car again, and Prappas, 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 Scott, Scott Prappas, maybe? I don't know, there was a lot of Scots, so maybe it is, maybe it's not. But anyway, appreciate you watching if you made it to the end. If you didn't, well, I still appreciate you even checking in, but you're not going to hear this anyway, so... It is what it is, and I'm going to, like I said, start doing a lot more with the IndyCar stuff um, because it hasn't spiked, and it's not probably not going to. But anyway, thanks for checking in. Whether you watch any more of these or not, all good, but, you know, hopefully, hopefully I will see you all again one way or the other. I will see you down the road.